On my way to Zumba today, I took I stopped for uh, at the park with my son when my wife went on to, to participate in Zumba. And um, we went along a path. I found a path in the park. There was this archway. There was this little tunnel in the trees, which I don't remember being there. Formed by park, I mean playground. This is really more of a playground with kind of a kind of a suburban sort of park with a walkway that goes around and very trim grass. It seemed almost like astroturf, but I don't believe it was. And a tennis court. It was, it was a new park. But there was this archway, and we went through the archway uh, because I like to explore paths. Um, I'm not like a bushwhacker, really. Occasionally I'll do that, but uh, I do like to explore new paths if I see them, just to see where they go. Um, along the way, there was it's blackberry season here. Um, there's a lot of Himalayan blackberries, which are an invasive species, um, but I guess so am I, an invasive species. And they do two things. One, they spread like crazy, and two, and they're very sharp, and two, they um, produce some delicious berries. Not the best berries, but, but good, and because they, they spread so so quickly and they're so ever present you can just walk around at this time of year and just pick blackberries wherever you're going but this 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 place was really after we went through this archway of trees um and not evergreens which is unusual for the area they were um deciduous trees that made me think of the eastern part of the united states actually this particular walkway um there was a lot of blackberries on either side so we were we were picking blackberries um, and it was very good. There was there was an abundance, and they were very sweet because it's been hot here, and so we had these very nice sweet blackberries. And he was able to pick them, and I, w of course, was able to pick them, and just you know had our fill of blackberries. Uh, and then we continued on, and um, we were walking barefoot, and he stepped on some blackberries or one of the thorns, and that really upset him because it was full of pain. Um, so eventually we got out of there, and time went on. We we went and did Zumba. Zumba was outside, and that was nice. Um, and then we got home, and I asked him what he remembered about the trip, uh, because I thought it would be instructive. I was thinking he'd remember one of two things: either the the thorns or the berries. And his response was sharp. Uh, so it was the thorns. And we have a big decision to make, and I thought that his answer might be instructive because I knew about this decision on our on our before our journey and so I thought about it along the way with the real people in mind so let's take a look at where everyone came down on uh, in terms of decision first I should explain what the decision is um, big decisions need the whiteboard uh, the decision is we have to decide what we're going to do on our turn <laughs> you know that's the decision we always have to make but the big crux of it is whether or not to just encephalize our um, our, our brain we have an action we can do and I should look up the name of that action I just remember what it does Locution, we can clear our Wernick's area. Oh, and you know what? It requires an expenditure, so that's not even possible to do. So that's going to change things. Um, so we're going to read this encephalized column as people who want to do locution, who want to move towards locution. I'm sure we have a card that would let us do it next turn. So prepare for locution. I think both of these might do it might be uh, for it still. The reason why Capazoid wants to do locution is because it's going to put us into chaos and bring us forward uh, with everyone else. But she likes the chaos too because she feels like um, by being able to clear away certain areas it might help the multiplayer dynamic a little bit. The game has become, in any multiplayer game, there's a, there's a certain amount that's out of your control. I mean I think I've said this before, probably. Um, there's a lot less control over the game state than in a two-player game. It has a lot more to do with the interpersonal dynamics. And when you're unable to communicate as we are, um, that really puts you at a severe disadvantage in a game. Um, and so she would like to, to move forward to be able to communicate. And also, um, by strategic uh, removal of pieces, might be able to improve the dynamics so that more people can be involved in the actual game. Um, so that's why she's in the encephalized camp. Uh, Little Red, he'd like to move forward. He's a, he's a traveling salesman. He likes to be able to deal with people. He's looking forward to the diplomacy that that would afford. Um, Cowboy, he wants to encephalize too, but he wants to do it by drawing the right card. So he continues to want to just draw a card. Um, these two actually might move more towards that since they can't do locution this turn, especially maybe Little Red. I think he might. Um, 
Then Flesh has a plan. He really wants. He sees the board right now, and he sees a good opportunity for trying for attempting some resource extraction, which you know he, he figures we can get into era two at any time, pretty much with very little preparation with the locution and all that. Um, he would he would very much like to uh, to to get that those resources and extract it. Chappie's down with that too. Um, it's a risk. Could go into chaos if we do that. But Chappie would like to, he, he appreciates the value of the metal. So, um, things are a little hazier now with the, the fact that you have to make an expenditure to do locution. I have to rethink about things, but let's just go over like what people have behind them in terms of making this decision. Because um, a cowboy isn't equal to a flush in terms of decision making capability. So, cowboy, he has one migratory unit in the game. Um, in battle stations, he's a lieutenant. So that, that gives him, you know, more say than maybe Chappie, who also has one migratory unit, but he is currently an ensign, I believe, in the Battle Stations game, and an ensign is below a lieutenant. Uh, Flush, he is, he would be ranked as a junior lieutenant, but he, he represents the, all the cities that, um, that the people have in the game. So he has sort of this metro metropolitan influence that uh, gives him a little bit more weight than if he had just some migratory units, I think. Um, and then we have our elders, both want to encephalize. I think I'm going to go ahead and move Little Red over here. He likes to do things now. He doesn't want to have to spend the time doing the resetting. Uh, Capazoids are still in this camp. So, I think, you know, what I, what I was thinking before was maybe a, going to be a push between these two. It's actually going to be a push between these two, which is interesting. I never can know what, what's going to come out of this. Alright, and Flush was going on bad information, which is funny because he actually was the one who said in the forum, uh, the thinking forum, that he wanted to um, make sure he had all the information before making up his mind. Uh, he didn't have all the information before making up his mind, coming up with his plan. had to do with um, kind of the rush with which I left today, and the rush I'm in right now, we, we need to leave again, and so I'm trying to get this get my turn started before I go. I say start it now because we may not be able to put it into fruition because Flush can't do his plan and we're gonna have to go back to I think just uh, and, and the locution plan is lost support because we don't we can't actually do it this turn I think we're gonna go with Cowboy's plan which is the one I thought was not gonna go through which is to just draw an arrow one card <laughs> Teepee. Our tape measure is a teepee. Our capital is a teepee. October is a teepee. My wife is a teepee. This, the prototype man, is not a teepee. We have a teepee. We didn't have to do locution. We um, played teepee, and now we have to decide who gets to reset. So let's take a look at who we have here. We have Capazoid, uh, Ka, as in cat, I'm sorry, Little Red, and Cowboy. I think Cowboy deserves it. Cowboy was the one who, who really headed up the blind card draw move. Um, and I think he's got the momentum to reset himself. It makes the most sense. He is... Um, exuberant and re-energized because of the way things went with him and his mother. And now we have played this card, uh, Potter's Slow Wheel, which, you know, I, a while back I had this strong, um, 
I guess it wasn't really strong, but I had something of an intuition or a bit of prescience that I would be playing that card or something to do with Potter's slow wheel. Um, so now we have to decide if we want to use it for a Potter, which we'd actually reset either our Priestess, which is right here, or our um, Forger right here to be a Potter instead. And then then if we decide to go that way, we'd have to decide whether we want to take the one in six chance to domesticate biofuels, or we could go for the mead drinking cults and the fecundity decrease. Um, you know, fecundity decrease is pretty nice, pretty attractive in this case. Uh, I'll have to talk to the people, but I think we're leaning towards fecundity decrease. It, it could help our innovation and make it much less likely that we would go into chaos this turn. And it didn't take long, even flushes behind it. If we don't go into chaos, we have a good chance of being able to um, sabbing raid some, some other cards like this right here, which we can use for a better chance next turn uh, to domesticate the biofuel. It makes a lot more sense. And we got a four on our stability roll, so we are okay. Um, now it's time for some population actions. I think the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna increase our population. I know that's dangerous, but um, it's it's going to be better for us to go into chaos sooner now that we're in um, era two. So let's go ahead and pop a guy out over here, which is going to and let's let's find out who we're going to pick. Let's get one of these guys. Actually, they haven't they haven't been playing, and it would be nice to have their presence once more. And Melky, it is. I like that 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 Melky is is able to play with us again. Um, I've really been enjoying the exploits of Junior Lieutenant Merker in Battle Stations, and it's fun to see him in this game, too. So now we have, I guess we only have one more. Despite, oh, no, no, we have two more. So now we can take two Sabine Raids here, and that will get us some cards, which will be helpful for later. And I think that's going to be it for our turn. So we've joined the others in Era 2. That means a lot of things have to change. Uh, one of them is we get to name our cities, and that's kind of the fun, easy part, so we went ahead and did that first. We have two cities. One's named Walloped, um, which means Dr. Flush's Checkup, and the other one is Sklug, Skulglogmorg, which um, uh, it doesn't translate well into English, so I won't even try. So we have to do that. We also, if you can see, Giraffe here has already begun this. We also need to fill out all our cubes. All of our cubes are are going to be represented both on the track and on the map now. Then we also have to assign diplomats to um, all the different countries here, and that'll be fun to do. I think um, the possessive man. It's pretty pretty obvious. It's going to be little red. They have um, enough uh, physiological similarities that. I think um, the inherent racism within a lot of humans would uh, would help us in that case because you, you know they look alike and so uh, it's maybe more likely to get along. We have decided on our ambassadors. There you can see them with their respective people. We don't need an ambassador to herself. Um, so first, let's start with Melky here. Melky thought he could get. A, he he really wanted to be an ambassador because he's a, he's sort of he's a very much a people person, and he thought he could get along well with the Hobbit Lord for two reasons. One, the Hobbit Lord is one of the more difficult um, people we're playing with, and also Melky's very short. And hobbits are short. I don't know how tall John himself is, but we we picture him as a short little man like that. Um, so over here, this one was very easy. We sent Cat, as in Cat, over to uh, be Wolf's, be our ambassador to Wolf's people. Uh, big reason he's playing her in battle stations. So I feel like there's got to be some connection there. And it just makes sense. And also, their personalities are kind of similar, so that works. Uh, we already talked about why Little Red is over with the possessive man. And then that left Runt here. Um, I, I totally miscalculated when I, I, I picked to have eight uh, subcultures. There's three of them up there because there are 24 cubes, and I thought there could be three for each, but uh, I'm stupid. One of the cubes goes on here, right? And then five of the cubes are over on the infrastructure track, so they don't really need to be represented by anyone. I suppose I could have, like, 
I could put people on these cubes. Um, I kind of thought that might be fun to have one person like represent energy in a way, another one immunology, sort of the cultural traditions that are attached to those technologies. And I might still do that, but then I have to find more more um, figures because you know I put figures over here by all the people, and I think that's what I will do. I think that works out. Um, so I'm no longer using any cubes for my people except for up here, but I'm going to switch those out. So that's who's who. Um, as you can see here, we have uh, all the different guys now on here. That's going to affect decision making some, though I still think the bulk of decision making is going to be, you know, the people who are actually on the map or in the elder pool. Um, but it also, you know, when a cube moves back to the track, it's going to be that person's cube forever. So a lot just went down, didn't it? I have uh, still some decisions to make, but I feel like, you know, there's been a lot, this has been an information heavy video. There's been a lot that's happened and there's a lot of cha uh, changes that make, that are, are that are being made, um, which, you know, is part of it. When you go up an era in your life, there, there needs to be some time for processing. So I'm going to take some time and process all of that. And um, perhaps next time I'll explain all of the changes and what exactly is going on. Because right now our mind just expanded and that's blowing my mind.